Hello folks, Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude in the straw hat, bringing you yet another awesome video. And contrary to what you might be expecting, no, it's not about wrestling. I haven't been in the mood to do a wrestling video lately, but I'm going to but this one is going to be a little different. Why? Because I'm going to be talking about a subject that I really wanted to talk about for the last for, for the last couple of months now. But if you've already clicked on the video, you already know what it's about. So, a little background. For those of you who don't know, I am a fan fiction author. For those of you don't, for the uneducated out there, fan fiction details stories that are written by fans about fan by the fandom of certain media like animes, video games, TV shows, movies, books, etc., etc., where the fans make up stories to uh, to get their creative juices flowing. A lot of writers, a lot of modern day writers get their start as fan fiction authors. Yeah, and even though Fifty Shades of Grey did, was written by a fan fiction author that was based off a bad Twilight fan fiction. But never mind. I have to say my journey as a fan fiction author started back when I was in high school. I was a big fan of Digimon at the time, which was an alternative to Pokemon. I loved the first season. The second season, however, needless to say, it pissed me off. So much so that I actually began my career as a fan fiction author in response to how sucky the se second season of Digimon was. And I was fairly successful. Apparently I'm something of, I, and I, I wrote a lot of varying stories, but my D3 series remains a very popular. In fact, a lot of Digimon fanfic authors cite me as an example. Most prominently, my friend um, Super Saiyan Chikiru take took characters from my series and spawned it into his own thing, the Digimon Fusion uh, series. Go look it up; it's pretty good. It's actually a Digimon interpretation of Dragon Ball of Dragon Ball Z. So after that, I kind of fell out of fan fiction for a while. I didn't write anything serious for a, for a couple of years. Then uh, something happened to me. Something big. Now you have to understand, there was a new from from my perspective there was a new Pokemon series coming out. By then, Pokemon Advantage Generation and Battle Frontier were just wrapping up. I'm a big Pokemon fan. And it was going into Diamond and Pearl. By this point, like with the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, I was close to being burnt out. I thought that was all there was to say about um, Pokemon the same way with, I thought with Yu-Gi-Oh! Little did I realize that Pokemon Diamond and Pearl would not only be a one of my favorite animes of all time, but is by far, in my personal opinion, the best of the Pokemon series. It's the best series out there. I was floored by how good it was. It was amazing how well they told the stories in it. And, and I was perusing the Celebi the Serapy forums, the pearl shipping ones, by the way, and I felt inspired to write. And I wrote a few short stories on the forum, nothing very much, and that got me back into writing fan fiction. And lo and behold, not only did I get back into my love of fan fiction, but I found that my writing style compared to my earlier work had completely changed and improved. So now here I am. I've written various um, Pokemon-themed fan fictions, mostly one chapter, one one shots, and currently my most popular work, Ash and Dawn Together, despite how dirty it is, actually has proven to be my most popular work, which is which blows my mind. I still continually get, I've never gotten that many sticks, that much stream of comments or reviews for work I've done. And Pokemon, and it's from a Pokemon franchise. But to understand, and people have often asked me, how can I write pearl shipping as good as I can? 
even though some people some people have even called me the king of pearl shipping authors. I wouldn't say all that. I'm good, but I wouldn't say I'm the king. But here's the thing. Okay, before I get to talking about pearl shipping, I have to tell you about how good Diamond and Pearl is. It is pretty much the it is probably the best written, best developed, and best fleshed out season of Pokemon to date. And I'm not just talking about it from from the character perspectives. The writing was very good. The battles were interesting, and it it told a very good overarching story. The, it's up there with one of my favorites. Now, why do I like it? Well, for starters, Ash, whom at this point was a seasoned veteran, he comes off in this in this series like a a veteran. He looks like. Even though he's still young and learning, he looks like he's seen some shit. And he's seen a lot of shit. He's seen clone Pokemon, gods, and, and, sh and time travel, and things that you wouldn't even believe. So, so, he comes off as looking very seasoned. Unfortunately, after this, he suffers for it because... He loses all the talents and skills that he had in the previous generations and comes off as looking like a total noob when we know he's not a total noob. This is why I don't, that's just why I didn't like black and white and I damn sure really don't care for X and Y. I tried it, it just didn't speak to me. Uh, yeah, his rivals, Paul, yeah, Paul is probably Ash's greatest rival before or since. Since no rival has pushed Ash as well as he is, I view Paul as sort of a dark reflection of Ash. He's not, he's not evil or bad per se, he's just different. Ash prefers to be friends with his Pokemon and bond with them. Paul prefers a more militaristic style and just trains them in almost draconian means. He's not overly cruel to them. And his method of catching them, he catches only those that suit his purpose. If, if a Pokemon doesn't have the right move set, he will just he would he would just he would just let it go. Or or if a Pokemon doesn't uh, doesn't um uh it doesn't perform as well as he thought it was, he would either trade it away with someone or just let it go. Some would call this cold. It's pretty efficient. Ash is young and excitable. He. He, he's, he's bright, excitable, and a bit with a short temper. Paul is calm, cool, collected, and reserved. He, he, does, he, 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 he sticks out without showing out. He's, there's, an era of cool, there's an aura of coolness about him. Like, like he doesn't do anything unnecessarily. Ash is battling. They even, they're even different in their battling styles. Ash's battle style is more improvisational and interesting techniques and, 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 and off-the-wall tactics that no one would ever, ever predict for, would ever be able to predict. Paul is more methodical. He plans. He has an overarching strategy. He stays two steps ahead of you. Just when you think you have him, have him over a barrel, you just realize you've fallen right into his trap. And, he's the, and they were perfect rivals for each other, not just because... Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, what about Gary? Gary was his best friend. Gary was okay be, as a rival for what he was. We didn't see that much of Gary. We got hints that Gary was ahead of Ash, and we only saw him battle once in the original series against Giovanni, and he got his ass slapped and his ass handed to him. And we, he got knocked out of the, po of the first Pokemon League uh, tournament before he even fought Ash, and we didn't even see that battle. It's more implied that that um, Gary is better than Ash or around the same level. They don't even really get to to face off until the end of the Johto of the Johto League, and by then he's less of a rival and more of a redeemed friend. I mean, they're less and he's less antagonistic towards Ash, but they're still that fr they still have a friendship. But there's, he's still a rival to them, and they still and they were able to recapture that friendship that they had, and I like that. With, and there were a, a few other so-called rivals in um, Advanced Generation and Battle Frontier, 
but they only got introduced towards the end of the of the of the tournament, and there was no tension there to to base a rivalry around. They were just there. Paul, we see his progression. Unlike the other rivals, we see him do gym battles. Before Ash fought the first gym leader in Orenburg City, it was Paul who fought him first because he was there first. And we see the kind of trainer that and that Paul is. See his motivations, and you can see him progress, getting better and better. We see him have more matches against superior opponents. We even see him take on uh, Cynthia, the undisputed world Pokemon champion, the best of the best, and got his ass handed to him. And more telling, we even see him face off against Brandon, the Battle Frontiers Pyramid King, a guy who who. Ash had to fight three times before he beat him. Brandon is up there. He is one of the strongest Pokemon trainers in the world. And Paul fought him. And we got to understand what motivates Paul. He is motivated by his brother and by the loss that his brother suffered at Brandon. And he was trying to sort of vindicate his brother by showing that his battle style could win. Excuse me. So that's just so that it's interesting to see that a rival got that much depth and fleshing out. And by the time they had their final battle in the Sinnoh League Championships, there's a lot of tension there. There's a lot of of high stakes. You can see that the two of them have come so far from all of their previous matches that they've gone through the best and the worst, and they're and they've both grown, and now they're putting each other to their absolute limit. They pushed each other. And that's why I love Paul. He, he is Ash's definitive rival. He will never have a rival that well thought out, that good, and that complex. Hell, it, he has more rivals, but to go on to, for the fleshing out, even the gym leaders in Diamond and Pearl are great. Before, gym leaders only had one episode. They were only there to serve as Ash's opponent, and they didn't really get much development other than, my name is this. This is my gym. This is the type of Pokemon I use. Let's battle, and that'll be that. I mean, think about it. Uh, how many in the, in the first in the first and in, in Diamond and Pearl? I mean, uh, in the first series and the Johto Journeys, as well as the Orange Island League. How many gym leaders can you remember that come off with more with with more than one episode is dedicated to them? Only about a handful I can remember. In Diamond and Pearl, however, each of the gym leaders gets at least two to three episodes apiece to flesh out and develop who they are. And you understand them not as, they're just not as obstacles for Ash to find, but they're also fellow trainers. And you, it's interesting to see who these people are, what they like to do when they're not training for Pokemon battles, or what their personality is like. It's so interesting to see that kind of shit. You don't see that. And, and, and I don't know if you'll see that in, in X and Y and Black and White, but that's refreshing to see. But, let's talk about Dawn. I didn't really have a good opinion of Dawn. I mean, I thought she was pretty. She had a nice pink skirt. She had blue hair, which I kind of like. But I didn't really think much of her. But, lo and behold, she is perhaps Ash's most... The, 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 the companion of his that has the most fleshed out story. I mean... The first episode of Diamond and Pearl is totally dedicated to her. We learn who she is, where she comes from, what her life is like, what her dreams are, what her struggles, and all that in just the first episode. Ash doesn't even appear until like the end of the, you know, I think in the end of the second episode. I could be wrong. So that was just interesting to see how they'll go to develop her. And you can, and unlike, Mis unlike Misty, she knows what she, okay, okay, like Misty, she knows what she wants. Misty's goal is more not so defined. She wants to be a water Pokemon master, but you really don't see her going through the steps to achieve that goal. She was just there. May did, was just travel along with Ash because she didn't know what else to do. She likes traveling. She didn't even like Pokemon that much, and only until to, to the starting quarter of Advanced Generation she didn't have an idea of what she wanted to do until she became a, con a coordinator. We know who Dawn is. She wants to be a great coordinator like her mother. We see her go through the steps. 
and we see her progression and it's so interesting to watch how she progresses and how she's willing to try new things she's not unlike the other um, female companions Dawn does not stay in the background no she she is in the foreground she is there I mean she is side by side with Ash she is she's not traveling behind him she is traveling alongside him and we see her struggles it was, she was, she, we even see her lose faith in herself and even at one point even consider be quit and even consider quitting being a coordinator because she didn't think she was any good but yet she kept on trucking and I like that I like complexity in my female leads don't get me started with Serena I'm not gonna hate on her she seems like a nice girl but it just seems like her only defining characteristic as far as I've read is that she is a childhood friend of Ash and that she likes him that's it I don't like shit like that Dawn is a, is a completely different animal she, she challenged a member of the Elite Four when was the last time a female companion of Ash's challenged a member of, her, a member of the Elite Four and hell she even went so far as to participate in a gym battle just to see what it felt like and to help her friend Maylene the the um what what is it I, I forgot the she was a gym leader who had lost her spirit after getting bitch slapped by Paul in their gym battle just completely wrecked by her by him and she was questioning whether or not she should quit being a gym leader another sign of that complexity I was talking about earlier but yeah Dawn is a is a whole different animal a lot of the promotional art is Ash and Dawn side by side together as partners. That's what they are, partners. And so this leads up to what I was wanting to talk about. How do you get good at writing pearl shipping? My answer is this. You don't really need unless you're writing an AU fic, you don't need that much development it's there it's already there what I mean is Ash and Dawn's relationship was so fleshed out and so glorious that if if I had to say I'm gonna say this Dawn is the closest thing to a legit girlfriend that he's had in the show before or since why because Unlike with the all the others, people off no one really made any parallels between them and making comments about, oh, you two are obviously in love. Oh, with Misty and May. They and they were, people were always making comments, uh, side comments about how they were how they were a couple. No one does that with Ash and Don. They started off rocky, but as the series progressed, their relationship deepened to a deep committed friendship I call this a romantic friendship that's my title it's basically a relationship in which two characters who are so close to each other who are, say they're friends but if the right prodding comes along could easily be pushed over to the romantic side there's not a lot of romantic friendships out there the only other one I can come up with is Ichigo and Rukia from Bleach now now Ash and Dawn, they have a lot of similarities. They have a lot of a lot of there are a lot of hints. But here's the thing, they're both kind of romantic idiots. They really don't think much of the female side or any relationship. They just like being together. And this is what I mean when the when it's already there. Their relationship is already established. I mean, towards the beginning towards the middle and the end of the of Diamond and Pearl, Dawn had become a fervent fan of Ash's borderlining on fangirl in her mind Ash can do no wrong he and whenever he has a battle she firmly cheers for him and she even puts on the little cheerleader outfit I mean, that's pretty cute well unlike Misty or May who who kind of doubt whether or not Ash can win certain battles Don has no preconceptions she firmly believes that Ash can win any battle even when he was he was battling, battling in the in the Canalave City gym, 
against Byron. Uh, Brock and another guy were talking about, oh, Ash, he's not going to do that well. He's behind the eight ball. It doesn't look good. Dawn was right there. She, she heard, you watch that episode, you can see her in her face. And her face just turns this, this, this angry sneer. And then she yells at him, I'm telling you, you're wrong. Ash is going to win. Support. She's always like that. Any time when he's battling or doing anything, she has utter faith in his abilities to get it done. And Ash, on the, on the, on the, on the flip side, is about the same. He has a firm belief in Dawn achieving victory. Even when she loses, he feels bad for her. It wants to comfort her whenever he can. And, and he was very instrumental in her getting back to her ways as a coordinator, which is very important. This bond even goes so far as to their Pokemon. They traded Pokemon. She, Dawn is the only person to have ever traded with Ash. I don't know if that's true in black and white or X and Y. I haven't watched those. So don't sue me or nothing, but they were the only ones who traded. They, he agonized. He, Ash loves his Pokemon like his children, and Dawn was the same. But from advice from, from Zoe, they decided, hey, I think it would be better if we train, but nothing's going to change. We're still, everything's going to be fine. And, and really, their Pokemon sort of act like their children in a way. I don't know if you can understand that, but, but what, what else? Um... There's just a lot of caring between the two of them. They do have their semblance of fights. And I can really count on one hand how many fights they've had. Like, once when they had an argument about which is better, coordinators or training, or Pokemon trainers. Once when they, when they had a, a disagreement about um, being tag partners, they, when they first started tag teaming together. Uh, see, uh, once when they had to take care of the Pokemon by themselves without Brock and they had into a little argument. And the last one I can remember is when is when Ash got snatched up in a trap inch trap and Dawn yelled at him. But that was more of like a little there wasn't much of a spat she was she was more like she was just worried about him. Like a she 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 bickered she talked to him like a wife would talk to a husband, like, How could you not see that shit? Honestly, you make me so worried. Like, get off my back. And they argue, they argue like, when they do argue, it's like a husband and wife, almost. So there's that. But the, here's the thing. Whereas with Misty and May, Ash would, would fight with them for the entire episode, Ash and Donald, when they fight, they make up quick. Hell, hell that last fight I told you about, that last little shouting match, it ended in a few minutes. Tra they had a they had a transition. Fight was over. They made up. That and that was it. That was uh, it. Was like amazing. Wow. So so yeah. This is what I mean. Th these little moments. These little things that 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 really work. If you understand what I mean. This is how you. A lot of fan fiction authors get this wrong. Like they need to say. Oh, I think I have a crush on Ash. Or I think I have a crush on Don. That. You need to just expand on the friendship and let it blossom into something. They don't need to kiss. They don't need to express their love for each other in the first chapter alone. They just need to it, look at the relationship as it is. Expand on it. Like in a lot of my in all my fix, unless they're dirty, a lot of my pearl shipping fix, they don't. I always portray them as being exceptionally close friends because that's how they are portrayed in the show. They even got a the, the, one of the theme songs, High Touch, is not only sung by the voice, the Japanese voice actors for Ash and Dawn, but the lyrics. Go look up High Touch on the internet and, and, and just see what they're saying to each other. It's friendly, but it has romantic subtext dribbled in it. It could be romantic if you look at it that way. So yeah, that's how you write a good pearl shipping fiction. It, 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 it accentuate the friendship aspect of it. They like being around each other. They don't. They, they, they're, there's, they're romantic, but they don't know it. I'm gonna put it. I'll tell you like this. There was a small arc 
in which they met up with a, a, a pair of trainers called named Corey and Lyra. Now, they then in, in, in one episode, Ash, Don, Brock, Corey, and Lyra were trapped in a in a windmill power plant. And they were trapped inside of a closet. Ash, Brock, and Corey were trying to get out. And Lyra was talking about, oh, I guess if we're going to be stuck here, we might as well get married here. And she asked point blank. And this is the first, and to my knowledge, the only time someone has ever made this, this, made this kind of comment. She asked, so, is Ash your boyfriend? And she held up her hands and said, no, no. But she, the way she said it was very telling because if you said that kind of shit to Misty and, and May, they would vehemently deny it and say, huh, who would ever want me to be a boy with that? Be with a boy like that? Kind of being like Sunadre. Dawn didn't, for her, she's been so close to Ash but never considered being, a, being romantic with him. And then she starts, then Lyra starts lifting off the good qualities about Ash. Talking about how he's brave and, pot and strong and kind of cute. And Dawn is really trying to consider it, but she really doesn't understand it. Fast forward to the next episode. She wants to, they, they were looking for a, a, um, a, um, what is it? Uh, I can't remember the Pokemon's name, but they were both looking for, they were all looking for it. So Lyra kind of finagled away for Ash and, 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 Ash and um, and her to be a team, and Corey and Dawn would be a team, trying to hook hook them up while she got Ash. Now she was kind of being catty that way. After that whole trip pinch thing, she saw that Ash and Dawn had some kind of bond with each other that was kind of unbreakable. It it even t it was even telling when they all got lost and separated in a cave. The first person and the person who found Dawn was Ash. He found her. Then, fast forward to the next episode where Dawn was in a contest in her usual attire. And Lyra was like, wow, Dawn, you look so pretty. And I bet she's the prettiest one in the bunch. Right, Ash? She was trying to hook them up. She was a pearl shipper. Yeah, before, she was like, she was trying to hook them up like, hey, Ash, don't you look kind of cute? And Ash, being clueless, he's like, yeah, she's the best one in the bunch. And... And Don and, and Don was like, "Wow, you better believe I'm the best." And she makes a comment like, "That's not what I meant. It went right over his head. It went right over Ash's head." And Brock commented like, "Yeah, went over Don's head too." And then and, and and um and then they shared a high five because Ash and Don are close like that. They they high five each other. And Lyra was like, "There's just two peas in a pod." And another telling thing that people that people can see inwardly that they can't see is is Kenny. Kenny is Don's rival slash best friend for our oldest friend from from Twin Leaf Town. He's a coordinator, and since the his, his since the, his introduction, he's had kind of he's been jealous of Ash because not only is he traveling with Don, Don thinks so highly of him, and he's kind of a rival to him. In his last appearance, she he asked her if she was gonna she what she was gonna do, and she was like, and, and all throughout the whole episode, she was just gushing over Ash, talking about, oh, I just wanted to, all I can think about is cheering on Ash, and she was telling this to another gym leader, and she's like, I have a problem, I really I'm, I'm a coordinator, but I don't want to know what to do because all I can think about is cheering on Ash. It consumed her being. And, and, and Kenny was hella jealous. And so he made an agreement like, hey, if I beat Ash in a Pokemon battle, you travel with me. She didn't agree to it. Ash didn't know about it. And because Ash was trying out a whole new battling style, he lost. And even, and even though people would say this is her, and even though she wrote a letter saying he looked really handsome out there, it didn't stop her from traveling with Ash because she kind of is obsessed with the guy. But yeah, this is when this is when you need to like if you this is my advice as a uh, for all you pearl shippers and and authors out there to write. Be subtle about it. The subtlety is what makes it good. That's the key to writing good pearl shipping. You just be subtle about it. 
the, the relationship, the stuff's already there. Expand on it. That's what you need to do. So anyway, that's my video of me, and it went kind of long, as you can probably see down here. But yeah, that's my thoughts on pearl shipping and pearl shipping fan fiction. If you like what you see, link, comment, subscribe below. Got any questions, hit me up on the pre private messaging, or leave me a comment. I'll answer as many as I can. And, it, and also leave a link to my fanfiction prof, fanfiction.net profile if you want to read any of my stories. I'd appreciate any and all input that you have. So, until next time, Shin Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat saying good day and high touch.